Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 15 titled Blind SQL Injection Without a Band Interaction. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in, so to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Go down, select the learning path, select SQL injection, go down, select blind SQL injection, and then go down to lab number 15 titled blind SQL injection without a band interaction. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a blind SQL injection vulnerability. The application uses a tracking cookie for analytics and performs a SQL query containing the value of the submitted cookie. So the vulnerable parameter is the tracking cookie. The SQL query is executed asynchronously and has no effect on the application's response. However, you can trigger out-of-band interactions with an external domain. All right, so the fact that the SQL query is executed asynchronously and has no effect on the application's response, that means that even if the application is vulnerable and we successfully attack the application, the application won't send us a useful response that will indicate that our attack is successful. However, because you can trigger an out-of-band interaction with an external domain, that means we can use an out-of-band SQL injection to exploit this vulnerability and know that our attack was successful. So triggering an out-of-band interaction means that you send an attack payload that causes an interaction with an external system that you have full control of. And since you have full control of this system, when you run your attack, you can see the response that you triggered, and therefore you know that you've successfully exploited the SQL injection. All right, next to solve the lab, exploit the SQL injection vulnerability to cause a DNS lookup to burp collaborator. All right, so what we're going to do, our external system is going to be Burp Collaborator. And the way we're going to know that we've successfully exploited the SQL injection is by doing a DNS lookup on Burp Collaborator. And you could see over here, there's a note that says to prevent the Academy platform being used to attack third parties, our firewall blocks interaction between the labs and arbitrary external systems. To solve the lab, you must use Burp Collaborator's default public server, burpcollaborator.net. So in order to complete this exercise, you do need to use the professional version of Burp. There's no way to use the community edition or your own external domain. Okay, while Burp loads up, I'm going to access the lab. Let's go back to Burp, hit next, hit start Burp. And let's click on our exercise. Configure Firefox to send requests to Burp, which will do that using Foxy Proxy. So now when I click on the home page, it should be sent to Burp, and it is. So click on Proxy, and let's just turn this off. Go to HTTP history, and we could see it right over here. So let's send that to Repeater, because we might be doing a couple of requests. And we've got it over here. If you hit send, you should see the response of the home page, which we do. All right. So since this is an out of band SQL injection, our end goal over here is to exploit a SQL injection vulnerability and cause a DNS lookup. So for the analysis section, the first thing we're going to do is click on Collaborator, which we'll do from Burp and then Burp Collaborator Client. Again, this is only available in the professional edition. Next, we're going to copy to Clipboard and put it right over here. So this is our Collaborator Client or our external system that we'll be doing a DNS lookup to. Now we need to exploit this SQL injection. So we'll keep that in the background right over here. So we'll, we'll minimize that for now. So now we need to exploit the blind base SQL injection in order to perform a DNS lookup on this domain over here. And to do that, we're going to go back to the exercise and look at the hint section. Click on the SQL injection cheat sheet 
and go all the way down to DNS lookups. So you can see over here, it says you can cause the database to perform a DNS lookup to an external domain. To do this, you will need to use Burp Collaborator Client to generate a unique Burp Collaborator subdomain that you will use in your attack, and then pull the Collaborator server to confirm the DNS lookup occurred. So this is our unique Burp Collaborator Client that we generated. This is the one we're going to perform a DNS lookup on. Once we perform a DNS lookup on it, we'll pull the Collaborator server and confirm that a DNS lookup did occur from this domain over here. So from the domain of the application. And to do that, it differs depending on the database you're dealing with. So for Oracle, this is the payload that you would perform. For Microsoft, this is the payload. For MySQL, this is the payload. Currently, we don't know what database we're dealing with. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with Oracle. If it doesn't work, we'll move on to Microsoft and so on. And that's how fuzzing the application really works. Unless you know some background information, depending on the technologies that are being used, the likelihood of a database that is being used in the backend. So starting off with Oracle, there's two different types of payload. The first is for unpatched versions of Oracle, and the other one is for fully patched versions. So let's look at the unpatched version. It says the following technique leverages an XML external entity vulnerability to trigger a DNS lookup. So we haven't learned about XML external entities in these videos yet, and we won't really learn about them until we reach the XML external entity module of the Web Security Academy. But just to give you a quick idea, XML external entity is a type of attack that can be done against applications that parse XML input. So if the application does not properly validate input, it's possible to exploit this vulnerability and cause a ton of things like information disclosure, denial of service, and so on. And in this case, we're going to abuse this vulnerability with a SQL injection in order to trigger a DNS lookup to confirm that we can trigger an external interaction from the database. So the vulnerability has been patched, but there are many unpatched Oracle installations in existence. And if you're dealing with an unpatched Oracle instance, then you could use this payload over here to try and exploit the vulnerability. So let's copy that and put it in our notes. Now, if this doesn't work, what we're going to do is we're going to try the next one, which says the following technique works on fully patched Oracle installations, but requires elevated privileges. So this puts an extra measure on us, the fact that the SQL server has to be run with elevated privileges. And if it's not, even though if it's vulnerable, we won't be able to do the DNS lookup. And now that's assuming that it's an Oracle database. If it's not an Oracle database, again, we'll move to Microsoft and so on until we've tried all of them. And when you're doing real assessments, you could try all of them and um, it doesn't work. And what that means is that it's not vulnerable to an out of band SQL injection. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put our burp collaborator client domain over here. So let's remove that. Copy this. Put it over here and it was HTTP. All right, next, we need to edit this payload so that it fits our SQL query. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in brackets. We're going to add the concatenate operator, and then we're going to comment out the rest of the query. All right, let's copy that. Open up repeater and put it in the tracking ID, which is our vulnerable parameter. And we might have forgotten something. So we need a single quote over here to close off this string. So the tracking ID cookie string. So let's put that over here. And then we'll do control U to URL encode it. And before we hit send, we're going to open up our client. So our burp collaborator client, make that a little bit smaller and then hit send. And then we're going to click on pull now and see if we got a DNS lookup. And here we go. It says we got a DNS lookup and it was received from this IP address over here, which should be the IP address of the application. Okay, so this should have completed our exercise because the exercise only required us to uh, do a DNS lookup. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. In the next lab, we'll actually use this DNS lookup in order to output uh, the administrator's password. So we usually perform uh, the exploit manually and then script it using Python. However, in this scenario, you can't really script it using Python because you 
can't use your own external server. You have to use Burp Collaborator. The application does not allow you to use anything other than Burp Collaborator, and therefore there's no scripting portion for this video. Again, in the next video, we'll take this vulnerability a step further and use it in order to output the administrator's password. If you like the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that it reaches a wider audience. Also comment below what you learned and what you would like to see more of in the future. Thank you and see you in the next video.